now we want to focus on the number of customers that stopped using our product. So what we can do is to, we don't need to do a lot of work. We already know the number of customers that have been retained. These are the customers that have been retained. So we can subtract this number from a total cohort size, right? That tells us the number of customers that were not retained. It's pretty straightforward. So this does the job for us. So what we can do is to come back here and just create a new measure. And call that measure John Customers. John Customers. Then from here we can just do a simple subtraction. We want to subtract. Um, we have new customers. From this, we want to subtract cohort performance. So if we subtract the cohort performance from the cohort performance referring to the retained customers, right? We can just rename it on your end. So we have the joint customers. So if I should go back to the previous step and just copy one of the visuals, um, I believe I should just copy this and paste. So I'm going to take out the feed parameter we added earlier, which is retention metrics. And what I'll be adding here in the visual is just the number of churn customers. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. So this is a total number of churn customers. We may also want to modify this so that it works the way that it's supposed to work. Because right now, if you look at it carefully, you realize that after, let me show you carefully. Let's look at this. After a point, you notice that the values start repeating themselves. Those values are not supposed to be there, right? Mm. Um, did I miss something? Yeah, I think I missed something. So this is what I missed. I'm going to, instead of doing it this way, I'm going to use switch. Switch. So what I'm going to be testing for where this condition is true, comma, then the condition is, is blank. If this is blank, what's blank? Retention rate. The retention rate is blank. I don't want to return anything. I want to return blank. But if it is not blank, then this is what I want to return right here. Yeah. This right here. Just a little trick. For some reason, I almost forgot how I did this. That's fine. So, yep. Click on OK. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was like, okay, okay, am I forgetting something? Am I forgetting something? So, this is it because we know that there should be no values here. That's expected. There should be no values here. So I don't want to start worrying about removing filters, add filters like I did earlier. I feel like this is a bit straightforward and it's a lot easier to understand. So now we have the number of customers that churned over the period of time. And yeah, this is it right here. So we have, um, and, just, and it's important to test your results, right? It's important to test your result just to make sure that what you've done is correct. Not that you do something, you'll be hyper about it and someone else will notice that your analysis is wrong. So we can just take out a calculator, for example, to confirm. So for example, in the 16th month, we see the number of churn customers is 704. So we do 955 minus 704. Four. So this is going to give us 251. So our expectation is this will give us the number of retained customers. So let's go back to the chart with the retention, with the cohort performance. So in the 16th month, we see that the value is 251. So this is working perfectly fine. So we've been able to confirm that this is working very fine and we're excited. We can test one more. So to test one more, 
we see that let's say for the eleventh month, we for the eleventh month, so we're going to be doing nine five five minus let's say yeah we remember we are in the core performance now for seven three so this is going to give us 482. Our expectation is that this is the number of customers that have joined for that month. They do use our service that month for 82. Remember, we worked with the 11th month. So if we should go back to where we are calculating our uh, churn customers for the 11th month, we see 482. So this is working fine. Our measure is fine. Yeah, we didn't write some complex that simple that, but it works. It gave us the results that we want to see. Up next, we just have to calculate one more thing, which is what the churn rate, right? So to let me change this to churn customers, rename this to churn customers, customers, churn customers. And you can format this as well. Just click on this visual, go to churn customers, conditional formatting. Select the color you want, don't format, click on OK, and this should work fine. So we get to see the months where customers have churned the, churned the most. Was, uh, was there an issue with our product? Was our portal up? Or you get the idea. So that's just the basic things. From this, you can just get some basic insights and have understanding. Or maybe some of the things you see, I may prompt you to go for some further analysis. So calculating the churn rate is pretty straightforward and simple. So we call this churn rate, churn rate. Then we just do a simple division. Remember that we already have churn customers and we can now divide this by the cohort size. The cohort size is new customers, the customers that belong to that don't forget. So we can now do churn customers divided by the cohort size, which is what's new customers. Then click on OK. And this is going to give you the retention, the churn rate rather. So we can just duplicate this page. To duplicate this page, we can check out this measure, take out the churn rate measure from the visual and just add the churn rate measure and we have our result here so we can just go back format it this should be percentage percentage we don't want any decimals we don't want decimals that was good then we can also format then the values is at 10 we can increase it i think to 14 oh, that's too much about 12. That's still too much. So then it is. And then we can now format this. Uh, just go to churn rate, conditional formatting. Then add this and click on done format, then click on OK. Mm, you see what we have here right now. So you have, so towards, okay, after, towards the end, you see that the number of churn customers keeps increasing. I think that's expected. So maybe you want what you want to look at is when your customers turn the most and maybe you want to try to keep them. So but over a long period of time you see that the churn rate keeps increasing, right? So we let's call this churn rate. Then we can now go back to this instead of adding a new page, I should duplicate. I'll duplicate this and now what we're going to be looking at is just a simple trend line simple trend line that shows us well, where are you months since first transaction then churn rate churn rate click on trend line line charts add months since first transaction to the x axis and you see this right here you see what it looks like so you see the sound rate jumps from zero 
after the first month to 70 percent so the focus i believe the focus will be after the first month but uh, yeah you want to or maybe the company may want to work more on keeping the customers to stay after the first month because after one month later you see that the churn rate doesn't change that much let's say you're giving this out as an interactive chart you may want to add like uh what's it called a slider yeah you want to add something like a slider but you want a slider just for the x axis oh sorry just for the x axis not the y axis this way people can just adjust this a bit the, the report users rather can adjust this value say so, okay i want to see for the first month then you get to see that okay after the first month the, just, there wasn't like a quick jump right so from 70 percent you start seeing the trend just most gradually up until you get to 97 percent over a long period of time so if you go back to the trend line for this you also see this, this stays from around 23 percent right keeps coming down and yeah so that really solves that problem for us we can choose to start with these visuals now we can choose to start putting everything together as a single visual but remember we are not done yet we've not calculated lost customers there's a way we can just do that recover customer lost customers is what we just did like the chunk customers but there's a way you want to just create a smooth month over month instead of having it as a cohort metrics or your recovered customers for example so i think that's going to be that's going to be another video you can't exhaust everything in one day and i want to make these videos in parts i don't want to load everything at once so that you are not lost right so um see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you won't uh, miss out on what we're doing but you won't miss out on the update and you can follow along so that you can have a full report that your company can use or you can build and use for your own company thank you see you in the next video